I needed to water the plants, okay? You know, if you want nice plants, you gotta nurture them so that they can grow. You know what else needs nurturing so that they can grow? Characters. Hi guys, you know that I'm a very character-driven reader and I love a good, well-written character. So whenever I'm reading a book where the characters just don't quite reach their potential, it makes me just... <sighs> Why would you... Are you really this stupid? Oh, uh, don't say it. Don't say it. Ugh. They said they weren't like other girls. How am I supposed to start caring about you? So today we're going to talk about my character pet peeves. We're going to talk about annoying tropes, aggravating character traits, and or writing choices that I just don't get. <laughs> we're going to talk about my personal pet peeves, but I've also asked you guys on Instagram to send me character writing choices tropes that you don't like, and I'm also going to discuss those. Let's begin with some of my personal annoyances that mostly have to do with character writing. I'm going to take off my glasses for this one because I can see that there's an annoying glare in them. My first biggest pet peeve of all time with character writing that I don't even understand why it's still a thing is when there's no character arc. Why? Why would you do that? It's kind of ridiculous how many books that I've read where the characters do not undergo any kind of character development and I just don't understand it because I thought this was like the first rule of character writing that your characters have to undergo some kind of development. So. Why would you do- why would you not write it? Maybe I'm a little spoiled because I recently started watching all the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies and just the character arc that Iron Man and Captain America go through. Ooh. Wonderful. My most favorite character moments in books are the moments that the characters undergo some kind of wonderful growth. So I'm just so very disappointed when I read a book where the characters don't undergo any character arcs. Like, come on. You had one job. There's also a flip side to this. Sometimes I read books where the characters undergo character development way too quickly and you can kind of feel that the character arc is forced in there. I have a good example of a book that doesn't do this and that is, let me get it, Kuroka Kingdom. This book is a good example of how you write character arcs without implausible fast character developments because characters will still make mistakes. Characters will not suddenly just leave all their flaws behind because the end of the book is there. I think the key point with character arcs is that the essence of the character stays the same throughout the book but their flaws become less and even if their flaws don't become less at least their intentions change. The second thing that annoys me sometimes in character writing in books is just the lack of flaws and a lot of you guys also mentioned this, by the way, on Instagram. A lot of people don't like it when characters are absolutely flawless, obviously. Luckily, it's been a really long time since I've read a book where a character is completely flawless because I think we've kind of moved past that point where those Mary Sue characters happen. But I do have another new thing that bothers me and that is when characters have one-dimensional flaws. You ever see those characters that just have, they just have one flaw, like they're clumsy or they're selfish and then that's their only flaw and it rarely ever really gets in their way and it doesn't really add anything to the depth of their character. It feels as if the writer was just like, all oh, right, my character needs a flaw for them to be interesting. Okay, they're too nice for their own good. I do not buy that. So for the third one, let me introduce this with saying that a lot of you guys mentioned miscommunication as something that annoys you with characters when, you know, characters just miscommunicate over something and it just like derails the whole freaking plot over something that could have just been prevented if they just talked to each other. And I was thinking about how that ties in with a general pet peeve that I have with character writing and that is when the characters act not out of their own personality and motivation but just to further the plot and i think miscommunication is an example of when characters do really stupid things not because it makes sense for them to do but just to add more angst to the plot other examples of this are things that you guys have also mentioned like uh characters saying that they have no choice like they just had to do it and you're just sitting there like come on you know you didn't have to kill your grandma because you have to save the boy you just met yesterday don't tell me you didn't have a choice. 
you really had a choice there. But it's just clear that the only reason they did it is because that would further the plot in a more interesting way, but it doesn't really make sense for the character to do it. Or when characters undergo these sudden motive changes where they wanted one thing for the whole book and then suddenly something else becomes extremely important for them because that's just necessary for the plot to happen, but to them it's completely out of character behavior. Or when authors make characters do things that are completely out of character just for shock value. I see this happening a lot with uh, villain reveal plot twists where, you know, one of the like really nice, sweet, innocent, not at all threatening characters turns out to be working with the villain and it's like this whole shocking thing, but it makes absolutely zero sense for that character to be doing things with the villain in any way bugs me. I really want authors to stay true to the characters because we as readers will notice when they start acting out of character just to serve the plot. Okay, the next one is a little bit maybe just like a little subjective personal thing, but I, I'm really not a fan of external character motivations. So I think the best example of this is when the plot gets set in motion because the main character wants to save their sister or any kind of other family member and the whole the whole plot line is just happening because of some kind of external motivation that the main character has that's just outside of themselves. I want internal conflict. I want those internal motivations. I really am really really sick of characters doing whole fantasy stories to save their sister. Not that I have anything against sisters. I don't have a sister, so maybe I just don't understand. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like want something a little more personal. Then another thing that I've been seeing quite a lot lately is when characters feel cartoony. <laughs> okay, this sounds really vague, but what I'm trying to say is when you read characters and they they feel like they are like a cartoon with a, a list of character traits, but they don't feel like a real being. I know that characters aren't real human beings, but you know, I want to believe that they are. <laughs> Usually at first this doesn't really bother me. Like for example, a good example of, that I'm immediately thinking of is the Truly Devious series. Every single character feels like a cartoon, like a typical stereotype with like this little list of like, oh, this one is the, the awkward nerdy guy and this one is the really pretty charming smart girl, you know? That's what I mean with like lists of characters. And I like that at first, it can be done well, like in Truly Devious, but it goes downhill once these characters never develop past their cartoony status. And the last one of character writing pet peeves is one that a lot of you guys mentioned on Instagram and it has to do with the villains, my favorite type of characters. There are two things. The first one is when villain characters are evil just because they're evil. These are the kind of villains that if you ask them too much about why they're doing what they're doing, they probably spiral into some kind of existential crisis. The second one that you guys mentioned that I really agreed with was when villains are evil because of this one tragic thing that happened in their past. My girlfriend cheated on me and that's why I want to usurp this entire planet and kill everyone on it. I really think there are more issues at play here. <laughs> okay, so those are all the little things about character writing that really annoy me. Let's go to the second part of this video and that is annoying character tropes. It's really hot in here. Anyway, next up. So there was one character trope that I think about 50% of you guys mentioned. It's one that I really highly agree with you with and that a lot of people seem to have a lot of annoyance with because almost everyone mentioned this one and that one is I'm not like other girls, which usually goes hand in hand with girl on girl hate. They're kind of linked, I think, because this whole idea of not being like other girls is inherently tied to feeling like other girls are not good and that you shouldn't associate with them. And I think this for like a really long time was this big trend, especially in YA books that all the girls were always not like other girls. There was a lot of rejection of femininity and hate on girly things. And I think a lot of us maybe went through a phase like this. I, I know that I did. It's sad to see that we saw that in so many, especially YA books that are read by a lot of young girls that basically perpetuate this idea that you shouldn't be girly and feminine because 
that kind of makes you different and cooler than everyone else. But I'm really glad to say that I haven't seen this in any books for a really, really long time. I think that as a species, we've evolved past the need to say that we're not like other girls. But then we moved past that thing. I think the response to that was the strong female character, which is something that a lot of you guys also mentioned. There's nothing wrong with strong female characters, obviously, but in a lot of books, strong female characters basically just meant a girl who was physically strong and that somehow meant that she was a strong character. Or it would mean that she was just completely emotionless and broody and mysterious but she had her knives. You don't have to be physically strong to be a strong female character. You don't have to basically exhibit traditionally masculine traits like emotionlessness and being physically strong to be considered a strong character. And you also don't have to be flawless to be a strong female character. This is something that I see happening still a lot in movies that when they make like a strong female character they basically just become these flawless human beings. I just want people to know that we don't want invincible female characters, we just want well-written female characters. The next trope that a lot of people mentioned was the chosen one trope and I'm gonna be honest I really don't mind the chosen one trope. I think it's a very divisive trope, but I'm pretty okay with it. I don't like it when it means that we have a character that is just fantastic and good at everything immediately and don't have to learn anything because they are the chosen one. But if that doesn't happen, I'm fine with it. And I'm gonna be honest that I actually really like stories that are about, you know, a normal main character finding out that they are somehow special or fantastical or have some great destiny ahead of them. I'm still kind of a fan of that little special snowflake trope, but I can see that a lot of people think that it's very overdone. But let me know in the comments, because this was like the only trope that you guys sent to me that I didn't necessarily agree with. So do you like chosen one tropes? Or do you not? Let me know in the comments. The next trope that a lot of people mentioned were basically perfect characters, manic pixie dream girls, bad boys with a tragic past, things like that. No, I'm not a fan of that either. To me, this is just about character writing. Like, if you're gonna write one of the characters way too perfect, either because they're a love interest or because they are supposed to be like a self-insert main character, I'm not gonna be compelled by your character. I want characters to have actual flaws, I want things to go wrong, I don't want them to be this invincible, super hot person. And then we have this one throat that I'm super happy someone mentioned because I've never heard anyone complaining about this, but it, it, it was one of the things that has bothered me for such a long time. It's when all the characters within one main character group fall in love with each other and no one is single. <laughs> It's, it's what I'd like to call Wings Club syndrome, where there is this exact amount of people and they all end up together as if it was like meant to be. It happens in Six of Crows. I feel like just like statistically speaking it makes no sense. I don't know like has this ever happened to you that you had like a friend group where it just happened to be so that every single person of the friend group fell in love with someone else of the friend group and they all made perfect couples and no one ended up single and no one fell in love with anyone else outside of the friend group. Like, it doesn't make sense. But I see it happening way too often in any kind of media and I think it's stupid. And I'm calling it Wings Club Syndrome. That's how I'm dubbing it right now and that's just how it's gonna be for now. And the last trope that I want to talk about is one that no one mentioned, but I wanted to bring up and is again one that might be very personal, but I am kind of tired of the whole princess royalty who doesn't want to get married be a queen type trope. <sighs> it's one of those tropes that I liked at first, but I feel like every time that I see this in a book, I'm just done with it. I think it's one of the reasons that I couldn't really enjoy the widely loved De Baron the Nightingale because we also have one of those main characters who doesn't want to marry. It was cool when Marita did it in Brave, but after that I felt like every character that gets this trope becomes 
a little one-dimensional because it becomes the only thing about them that they are a princess that don't want to marry and therefore they are cool and being a strong female character because they don't want to marry. I just want to read about strong female characters without them having to either be emotionless killing machines or princesses that don't want to have an arranged marriage. Like surely there are other ways to write good, strong female characters. Part 3. General Annoyances. So lastly, let's just rapid fire go over a few general annoyances that you guys have sent in. Just little things that just, you know, really get on your nerves. The first one is when the author tries to make the character too relatable. It kind of feels as if uh, the author is like that meme of like, hello fellow kids. Or <laughs> when we have characters that are just like, I'm so plain and basic. No one likes me because I look so ridiculously normal. <laughs> Another one of those things in YA books that I'm glad we've kind of moved past. Also, in real life, has anyone ever complained about looking too normal? Is that a thing people are worried about? Another thing that annoys me to death <laughs> is when the main character is wanted by everyone. Like, everyone falls in love with the main character. And you can't tell me this is just another wish fulfillment, author self-insert or reader self-insert. I don't like it when we have characters that are beloved by everyone around them. It just makes them not compelling, in my opinion. I'm definitely not thinking about one certain character here. Absolutely not when I'm talking about characters that are too perfect because everyone falls in love with them. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know any characters like that. Someone mentioned selfish characters, which yes, that's also annoying. Although I do have to say if it's written like a compelling character flaw, I'm fine with it. But I'm generally fine with a lot of annoying character traits if they're just written as a good character flaw. But I do know that a lot of people just get annoyed with those flaws as character traits because I sometimes see like debates going around this where some people are like whoa this character is extremely annoying because of these character traits and then other people are like no I actually thought they were like very well written and compelling because of these flaws that they have. I usually lean on the side of I find them compelling. Another thing that annoys you guys including me is when we have a romanticization of whole behavior. This is usually compiled with the bad boy trope where them being a terrible human being is excused because they had a tragic past. It's not... it's not okay. No. Another thing that can be extremely aggravating is when the characters don't notice things that are like blatantly obvious to the readers and you as a reader are just like come on you gotta notice the thing like please notice the important thing like I as a reader have already seen it why haven't you seen it yet and I think this is just an interesting point because it basically means that the author thought that you as a reader would not figure it out by this point which I think is just a sign of not writing your mystery well enough. I do understand that is super 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 difficult to write. I don't understand how people do it but when it goes wrong it can be kind of aggravating as a reader. Uh, and the last thing that aggravates me a lot that a lot of you guys also mentioned is when the character are one of those self-sacrificial characters that just want to sacrifice themselves all the freaking time. <laughs> Something happens and the character is just like, yes, take me, I'll die, no, I'll jump here, take me, just let me sacrifice myself. And it's like, no, you're being stupid because this is not gonna get you anywhere. This is not courageous behavior. This is just dumb. I have the same kind of aggravation for characters that are constantly like, oh, it's my fault. This terrible thing that happened that I have absolutely no influence on is absolutely my fault and I'm gonna complain about it for the rest of the book. <sighs> okay, those were all my character pet peeves, tropes that I found annoying with the help of you guys. I know this video was just me complaining about a lot of things. There are a lot of things I really like in characters. I don't know if anyone's interested in seeing a video about that, but sometimes you just get a vent about your annoyances. I really hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if you have any tropes that annoy you and I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye!